Not every wood carver has a bench plane, and you certainly don't need a bench plane uh, for carving per se, but I'm awfully glad I have one. This is a jack plane. This is my um, most favorite plane, my most useful plane. I'm going to tell you a few basic things about this plane that I wish somebody had told me when I started. Let's just have a look at this plane. The, the bottom bit here is what runs on the wood. So you want to make sure that this is nice and polished. And you can do that by rubbing it on uh, a piece of very fine sandpaper on a flat surface. So you can polish that up very nicely. And that helps the plane to run across the wood uh, easily. The other thing is if we have a look in, in here, uh, this is the, um, the capping lever. This actually holds everything in place and it just comes off. Then here is the actual play, uh, the blade mechanism. It's in two parts and you can take it apart by undoing this screw here, like this. And you have, you have the blade proper. This is the iron or the, the plain iron which does the actual cutting. And like a chisel and the spoke shave, it has a, a flat side here and it has a bevel, a single bevel on the other side. And this interesting shaped object here, this is the, 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 um, the, the, the chip breaker, I think it's called. And it sits here like this on the blade, just behind, and it breaks the chips up rather like the inside bevel of a carving tool. So a tip would be to set this just a little bit back from the edge and you tighten it like so. So this should be an even uh, gap here and you want it a little bit closer for harder woods and a little bit further away for softer woods. So that's quite a useful tip. Then at the back here, this is where the, the blade actually sits. And you want to make sure as you're planing that all this is kept clean and that you don't get shavings stuck underneath this piece of metal. If you do, you can undo these screws here, take this off, clean it out and pop it back in again. To reassemble the plane, we put this assembly, the chip breaker and the blade proper, back into the, into the, uh, the, the this is called the frog. We rest it on the frog of the, the blade like this. And as you do that, you want to be careful as you sit this home here, not to bump into this edge here. So make sure you protect that edge as you put it in. This lever here, as you can see, adjusts the movement backwards and forwards. So either you can have the, bl the blade slightly tilted to one side, so it gives a, a deeper cut on one side than the other, or if you haven't uh, been truly square and you're sharpening on this very edge here, uh, if that's not square across, then this lever here will take, into, uh, take that into account. So we'll put this back in carefully. It sits on a little notch here. And then this, this uh, lever here, this plate sits over there and should be firmly in place. If it's not, we can just tighten that up a little bit. Like this. So the whole thing should be solid and shouldn't rattle. And there's your plane ready to go. To sharpen, you do need to take this breaker plate off. The best thing to do is just turn it to one side and pull it out like this. And when you put it back, do this like that so you don't bump this edge against this edge. So there's the plain blade. It's flat on one side and has a bevel on the other. You can make that hollow ground uh, off the grinding wheel or you can come straight onto a sharpening stone. Now this stone really isn't wide enough, but this is the, the stone I have. This is my fine translucent Arkansas stone. So what I normally do is I, I go at a bit of an angle like this, but ideally you'd have a wider stone. So oil on the stone as before, as always. This is about 25 degrees or 30 degrees, something like that. And forwards and backwards, keeping that angle. Now you can get jigs to, to set that up, a little rolling wheels at the back. These are great, those will be very consistent. So you 
sharpen like this at an angle or perhaps like this to compensate and then turn it over once you feel a wire edge coming turn it over put it flat here like this one two and then just polish that off so this face is always truly flat yeah so again backwards and forwards like this all over the stone feel this wire edge coming shows that you've actually got to the edge and sharpened it flat like that polish off and then you can test that into a piece of wood and then you put it back as I said by across there down here and then you set that edge here and you want to try and make that as square across as possible so this is a square blade angle about 25 degrees or something like that and then you tighten that up put it back in the plane so I will now show you a little bit about how to use this plane. So let me give you some really good tips about using a plane. When you're working on an edge like this or where you can see the edge, then you can see the fibers in the wood. If they're rising or falling like this to the surface, then you want to make sure you're going downhill with the fibers like this, rather like sharpening a pencil. So check your wood, work with the grain as much as you can. Don't take off too big uh, a shaving at a time, rather work steadily through finer shavings. It's very tempting to take big cuts, but far better to just be a bit patient and take finer ones. Put this finger here, and that allows you to sight along the plane a lot better. And then here's one of the most important uh, tips I can give you. When you're doing your stroke, don't just run it backwards and forwards like this. Put more pressure on the front of the blade as you start and then switch the pressure to the back of the blade once the cut gets going. And that way you'll get a very nice straight face that uses the, the body of the plane to direct the surface. So front here to the back. Front then back like so and one other thing I'd say is that I often plane at an angle like this 45 degrees even and the reason I do that is it gives a big slice a bit like a carving slicing cut and you get a very very um, accurate sharp shaving so if the wood's at all problem with knots or whatever think about going at an angle like this you get an easier cut like so. i often use it uh, a plane to take the edge off to chamfer a piece like this and for this you can just you see you can just perhaps increase that a little bit and just same thing pressure at the front pressure at the back like this give yourself a nice smooth edge and that's an immaculate surface and uh, not necessarily good enough for joining but certainly a nice finish